I've lived here since late 2011, and I would hike back here all the time, you know, jog back here. I didn't think much of it. I'd see weird structures that looked a little deliberate. Didn't really think anything of it. But you'll see when you get back here that it feels different. Like, you feel like you're being watched. Like, you know that this is their territory. About half a mile straight on down is where I saw, obviously, I think it's a portal. Nothing else makes any sense. Scat brush, good to see you, good my you man. Finally meet in person. Absolutely. Uh, we've been talking for how long? Two, three months. I'd say so. Three, yeah, maybe even four. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for coming down. Well, I got some swag for you. Oh, sweet. Some Bigfoots of Michigan no, swag. No, that's a bumper sticker. <laughs> Here's the hat, All and right. you chose the season two hat with the red writing. You can't go wrong with black and red. You can't. <laughs> they go, they go, they go great together. That's right. All right, and then here it is, the famous one and only. Big Foot to Michigan coffee mug. That's plenty for wake up juice in the morning right there. We're definitely going to be utilizing that's for sure. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right, man. Uh, let's get to it. All right. All right. Well, let's start off with uh, where are we at right we now? We are at a Maya's Fresh Mexican here in Monroe, Michigan, right here at the corner of Monroe and Front Street. Food's great. Drinks are great. Owner's an amazing dude, very pro community. If you want a good time, swing on by. It's right downtown, so. Awesome, I noticed yep. that. A lot of history here oh, very much in so. downtown Monroe. Wow. Absolutely. All these buildings are upwards of 150, 200 years old. Awesome. Yep. All right, well, that brings to mind I'm <laughs> driving down this way, okay, and I'm going through downtown Detroit on I-75. No easy feet, mind you. Well, and, and <laughs> you, well, usually I'm heading west out of Sandusky, I'm heading I-75, and I'm heading north. And so this is the first time I'm coming south. And I'm like, are Sasquatch really? And I always tell myself, I go over everything I think and don't check myself, and I'm like, are Sasquatch really this close to Detroit? Are they really this close to urban areas? Uh, you know, honestly, with the experiences that I've had here, i got to say yes. And there's more and more urban accounts of Sasquatch, Bigfoot, or anything, you know, meeting the same sort of description. It seems to be happening a lot more, but I think we're moving in their territory a little bit. When you start to, you know, go all economic and start building businesses and whatnot, you're cutting into their home. They seem to be here way before we were. And, and that makes sense, but then, as soon as I got to downtown, I cross over the River Raisin, and I'm like, well, there you go. There's a common denominator. Wherever I go, um, interviewing eyewitnesses, there is usually some kind of high volume, fast flowing river. Okay? Because right there, water is life. And then it brings wildlife in. So there's all your food sources. I know these things like fish. They like the freshwater clams. You know, they're digging in them. And, um, it's a great yeah. pathway, too. It's just a great way to connect the different cities and stuff virtually unnoticed as well. Exactly. No, nobody's thinking that what's walking along the shore at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, right. Unless you're like us and we live for that sort of thing. I mean, And that's the thing. More and more, I drive around at 2, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, and there's nobody around. Nope. These things can go from point A to point B in the darkness. They're so quiet as it is. No wonder there haven't been a ton of sightings. But with technology, there are more and more sightings. Now, in the vein of what we were just talking about, Val Savala had mentioned to me, and you know Val as well. Very much so. Val's a great guy. Something about Sasquatch, clans of Sasquatch, families of Sasquatch, raiding the soldiers in the War of 1812. Yep. I mean, I know you've got a battlefield right over here. For sure. So well, what do you know about that? 
Back in the day, I know that soldiers were very much about documenting their experiences, you know, writing home to their families and stuff. Well, these guys were actually documenting while they were under fire. They had these Sasquatch description like creatures climbing the walls taking the food rations. So not only are you contending with enemy forces, but they're contending with Sasquatch. So there's a lot of history going back to this area. That's absolutely nuts. So to me, that, that's enough information. So we've got the battlefield accounts, Sasquatch rating, okay? We've got the river raisin right here, huge food source, water supply, um, and then we've got the footprints that you personally have found. Absolutely. And so where exactly have you found those, or what, what area? Right at Munson Park, which is just one of our local parks right near Monroe, about two, three miles from our current location, that's where we'll be at. It's just, you drive back, you got a little pond in the front for some fishing, there's some walking paths, people take their dogs, uh -huh. kids yeah. play, this is all the soccer leagues at. Okay. Behind that, there's about six or seven miles of hiking trails. Awesome. And it's just, it's beautiful back there, it's a great, it's great and peaceful, but again, I found some pretty, Pretty compelling evidence back there to suggest that we got those bad boys back there. Oh, very cool. All right, we'll tell you what, let's get some grub, some of this good Mexican food Absolutely. here at Amaya's, and uh, yeah, then we'll head on out, man. All right, man. Sounds All right, good thanks so much, man. Absolutely. And everybody at home, stay tuned for more of Big Bus of Michigan. Me and my buddy were out here doing some field research, you know, doing some whoops, wood knocking, that sort of thing. We came right around this corner and right from out this direction, about, I'd say, half mile. You just hear the whoo, just loud. It just carried. Like, it was just letting us know, hey, we're here. You guys want you guys want some results? Here you go. Here we are. And I, after that, we just kind of kept on going. Because so I'm like, I want to stop, but I don't want to stop after that. I didn't know if that was a warning. But they were coming for sure, and it was right about here. And I think that they travel, because the river's over there to the west, so they have all the food, all the water they can need, and they come over here, which is basically an unofficial nature preserve. Nobody can hunt, nobody fishes over here. Why wouldn't you go to where there's an unlimited food supply, you know? Right about here, you can see that tree, how it's just kind of up there in the V of that tree. Now you can pretty much debunk windfall because look at the base. You can that probably fell from over here. It's like something drugged that up into position. So we might be looking at the start of a possible teepee structure right here. If you look right over here, you can see where they're kind of like arched over, not quite broke. Something literally manipulated the structure of this thing to kind of do like a dome-like shape. Kind of over the game trail. Exactly. And you can kind of see where they have stuff sort of stacked up in a deliberate pattern next to it. I mean, that right there, man, unless somebody wandered off the trail and started that, which I highly doubt, there's another sign of your activity right there. It's very subtle, isn't it? Same with here. It's like a base of maybe like a primitive structure. I mean, I know they build them, but who's to say that they wouldn't? Yeah, it's something almost that like already a TV, exists. like you could sit underneath there. Exactly. That's where I would go, like in a storm or something. I'd take shelter under something like that for sure. I think that juveniles practice tree structures. That's why some of them look better than others. I think something straight up didn't like this, so it said screw it. I mean, that's you can see where it's corkscrewed from here to here. Yeah, it's been twisted and then around. Good point. Like, windfall's not going to do that. Not at the base of a corner like that. I mean, that was a pretty green tree, you can tell. Uh, one day, we came out here just doing some investigating. Right at the front of this path where we came onto the trail, one of these trail markers was laid perfectly over the path as if to say, hey, we don't want you coming any further. Now, I know when I'm not welcome. I really do. So I didn't go past it. We, we listened to our guts. We didn't go over it. We don't know what would have happened if we did. But coincidentally, that was the same night the portal happened. So maybe coming in here could have saved our lives. Who knows? But just seeing one of these over the path, and this was from the other trail. The one that was covering the trail was from Red Loop. Who was going to carry one of these heavy markers from there to here to block the path off? Wow.
right about here is where we might start to see some squash prints. This is about where I started to pick them up that day when I was out here. And as you can see, a lot of this is still, the imprint is still here, so there's a good chance we'll find some. Absolutely. check this check this track out and if you come over on my side you'll notice the actual toe bed right here this thing this appears to be a left based on where the big toe would be and then it kind of vanishes off here into the brush oh my gosh that's a great track honestly all right let me catch for being three four days old that's a yeah, phenomenal track. on that side yeah that is strange oh i see what you're saying you see how you kind of see where the, the mud is starting to crumble up at yep. the toes so it's almost like she dug in and stepped and slid, obviously. I'm guessing that happened when there was still water pulled up in that. I mean, I weighed 230 and I couldn't mimic that jumping. Yeah, it's super deep. That's awesome. These are the weird things I can't explain out here. Who's gonna take a plank from, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that bridge and put it right along a game trail where it stands to reason there was probably some sort of flowing water here. I mean, you can see it goes back in a ways. I don't see anybody stepping off the path to do that right. when the actual walking path already carved out for you. That is weird. Just little things like that. You know, the average Joe's gonna walk by and be like, ah, whatever, somebody did that. I'm looking at reason and logic. Yeah, and I'm looking at how tight that game trail is. I don't want to walk back and get eaten by bugs. And... Exactly, but you know that's at least deer and rabbit, for yep. sure. And I don't think the deer and the rabbit put yeah, they that there. They don't require the the plank there, little, the little land bridge. Hard to tell on camera just how these trees are but with the vines and these trees i would think this would be a playground oh for sure for the adolescents at like 2 a.m oh yeah because to be honest that stuff's pretty strong and that I, vinery is uh-huh and on camera these trees look a lot smaller yeah like way back in than they are because you got that sort of portrait yeah. landscape sort of view yeah these these trees are a good two three feet in circumference for sure i mean heck that vine's a good three four inches in circumference yeah i mean a good good hand with you know opposable thumb would have like you said a field day with that yep i gotta do this again come on all right you do this Technical difficulties. I heard it. That was a straight wood knock. Yep. Not far at all. Yeah, that was a hollow. That was literally like there. Okay. I mean, they could be looking at us right now. We'd have no idea. 
Dude, I just heard something like a tree knock right over there. Do you hear something behind us? I do. It's Lock. almost like we're being, maybe, I don't want to say stalked, but something's trying to get our attention for sure. Yeah, I keep hearing tree snaps, and then I heard a, um, a, uh, uh, something similar to that. Almost something being like, Psst, hey, over here, like in its own way. Yeah. Hearing stuff all over the place, to be honest, but all the action seems to be about our six o'clock. Yep. As we look at, at that sway. I mean, oh, yeah. Can you imagine how much fun they'd have on that thing? Yeah. Yeah, definitely an adolescent paradise here. For sure. Like you said, we think we might have found the nursery over there too. That ground was worn in a circular fashion. Yeah. Very interesting. It looks like this was completely just twisted and snapped over from over here. Like something was just kind of coming through and said whatever, you know, in particular, I don't like this tree, and did its thing. And maybe it was drug... Did you hear that? Alright, that, that was, was a... That a good size yeah, step, too. Yeah, that was a good, good tree whack, that man. Was, yeah, it was. And I, I'm, it's sometimes to say that's not very, very far away. Can so, I knock in, should I knock in response and see? Yeah, do it. All right. Here we go. We got a tree branch pulled over the path. Talk to me. What you heard another one? All right, coming over. All right, Scott, All man. Right, man. I'm excited. We're here at a particular location. So why don't you tell us what happened here? Just behind us here, like not 75 feet, is where I believe we saw like a portal. All the way from the bridge leading to the trails that we just spent a couple hours walking, there's always activity like straight down the tree line. So we're just like beeline and down. I got my phone and all of a sudden this orb appears and I'm like, okay, maybe it's natural gas or something. Then I zoomed in further and stuff's like coming out of it. Straight up bipedal creatures. And that automatically my mind's going, are these aliens or is this Bigfoot? And then now my views on interdimensional travel and all that kind of stuff changed after that. Okay. And ever since, man, I go over that video and it's like, it just blows my mind. Like, what am I looking at? How come I got to see it? Why am I the chosen one to see that, you know? And we just walked around for what, three hours? Uh, found multiple footprints. Okay, we heard two to three distinct tree knocks. The clearest I've heard. So I'm like, holy crap, possible maybe one or two grunts, and then a lot of trees snapping behind us. Okay, so that was really kind of like, wow. There like something was curious or something. Yeah, was, yeah, activity. So now, you know, I'm a Christian, you're a Christian. Absolutely. So you've probably been into this paranormal Bigfoot stuff longer than I have. Um, I heard you say one time about a connection to Cain. Yes. What, what's that? A biblical Cain. Cain and Abel, the story in the Bible, Absolutely. that there's a connection to Cain. So let's hear it. Now, there in 1835, there was a gentleman by the name of David Patton. He believed, he belonged to the funda uh, fundamentalist Mormon church in Tennessee, which, you know, Latter-day Saints nowadays. And uh, he was riding his horse, or mule at the time, and he said that he saw a weird figure walking next to him. And 
he started, he's like, all right, might as well open conversation with this guy, you know? And he asked it who it was, if the skin was dark, completely covered in hair, eight or nine feet tall. What's that? A typical Sasquatch description. And he told David that he was Cain from the Bible and that God had sentenced him to walk the earth where everybody would be scared and want to kill him. So the theory is Bigfoot being Cain, you know, the, the marking that God, God never is clear about what he, the mark he gave Cain. Right. What the we don't know was. what it is. Yeah. But maybe it could be Bigfoot. Okay. You know, maybe it could be. So I'm not saying that all the Bigfoots are Cain, but I do have somewhat of a belief that they're all descendants of Cain. Okay. You know, because if I found out that Cain was like my long lost grandfather, that would suck. Because you'd be like, he had to be evil and I got to be affiliated with that? Oh, sure. So I don't think all of them are bad. I think it's just like humans. You have your handful of good ones, you have your handful of bad ones. Yeah, and I don't think God um, makes um, everyone accountable for someone else's sin. No. You know? Um, wow, that's that's really the first. I think I might have heard it one other time, but yeah. that is the best description that I've heard. So whether it be from Cain or the offspring of the Nephilim, you know, tell us a little bit about that. That that's another mm -hmm. narrative. Oh, well, in Genesis, I believe chapter six, verse ten, it spoke of when Lucifer and a third of the angels got kicked out of heaven. They saw the women, and this is right in Genesis. They saw the women to be fair and they mated with them. The offspring of this half angel human, you know, baby were the giants, the Nephilim. And the Nephilim means men of renown in Hebrew. Okay. So and then you have all the giants taking over Canaan. You got Goliath, you got the 18 foot skeletons that are unearthed today. And some people believe, and I'm kind of starting to buy into it on account of my own research and experiences, that Bigfoot might also be some sort of offshoot of the Nephilim as well. Okay, okay, and then so, like we were talking earlier, we looked on Google, there's like, what, a million different species of insects? 7,000 new a year discovered. Okay, so then you factor that into just even human beings. You see how many different kinds of human beings there are. So why aren't there so many different types and species or just different looking ones? We know there's different colors, probably different facial features. I so, agree yeah. with that. And I think it's a geographical thing too. I think, you know, like if you're further north where, you know, like Alaska, Siberia, Russia, everybody's got to be tough. You know, even the summertime is spent prepping for the winter, you know. So I think that Sasquatches naturally are going to have a harder time foraging for food and stuff just like humans would. So if I'm somewhere where it's nice and warm in Florida like a skunk ape, I don't got to worry about food. Yeah. I got pythons, I got gators, I got fish nonstop when I'm going to Alaska every other living creature wants to eat as well. Yeah. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bitter because I'm not quite happy with my living conditions. Okay. So I think it's just like us. I'd much rather live in Florida than Alaska. You give me the solitude of Florida, of Alaska and Florida, we're good. But you, <laughs> right, know, you right. know what I mean? So then we connect that to the geographical location here. We know there's connection to Native American lands, to state parks. What do we got going on here? This is uh, Monroe, Monroe County, We've got mm. what, the old battlefields? We the have, old... yes. The um, bloodiest battle of the War of 1812 took place right here in Monroe. Okay. And that's where the, um, the battle for the River Raisin took place. The reason is called, a little, little fun fact, the reason it's called the River Raisin is because all the blood from the fallen enemies actually dyed the river a raisin red color. Wow. Yeah. And, no. and the River Raisin connects a lot of major parks and waterways. So it stands to reason these things not only have an unlimited food and water source, but now they can travel relatively undetected. Yeah, and you just set a recent sighting? In Dundee, and Dundee's about 13 miles west of our current position right now. Okay. And uh, the river flows all the way up through, so who's to say that the ones we're seeing here, the evidence of, aren't coming from there as well. And then I've heard of sightings in the Waterloo State Game Area, yes. which is along that, that truck, you know, exactly. up in that direction. All those are so. historical accounts where you can read about documented cases of you know ape-like creatures stealing food while the soldiers are actively engaging with the enemy awesome so common denominator rivers is the major thing and then any kind of geographical location that is not going to be turned into a subdivision where it's consistently state land consistently protected land exactly and, the, so. and these i believe these things know that you know, there's a lot of deer, a lot of fish, obviously, with the river, lots of rabbits and stuff over here. We're not allowed to hunt. This is the back of, you know, a, a local park. Where if I wanted to go eat, I'm going to go where nobody else is going, yeah. where it's where it's protected. 
So naturally the animals are going to flock here because they feel safe as well. So the Sasquatches are going to come over here and they're going to utilize the territory. They're just like us. You know, we're all creatures of least resistance. Point A to point B. Yeah. That's how Sasquatch is. Yep. And if they're trying to move from point A to point B at nighttime, they're looking for areas like this where they can hold out. Exactly. And I mean, if you look around, it's real quiet. We could be looked at by one right now and have no idea. Yeah. It's yeah. perfect. Awesome. All right, Good man. stuff, Scott. Absolutely. Man, thanks for You're so welcome. much for giving us an episode and we look forward to more activity coming from you. Absolutely. I will. I, you got it. I go out here almost daily, so we'll find something. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, man. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Bigfoot's of Michigan. And we'll see you next time. Keep it squatchy.